Imagine Port Hadlock in 1870. The entire town had just been bought by Samuel Hadlock, who intended to establish a lumber mill at the south end of Port Townsend Bay. Once built, the mill rapidly grew, extending in both directions along the shore. In those days, the lumber, milling, and shipbuilding industries fed on each other, and so it was in Port Hadlock. What is now Lower Hadlock was the center of town, with all the expected accompanying industry and entrepreneurial spirit. Five cent pints naturally gave rise to legendary brawls as loggers, lumbermen, boat builders, and sailors converged on the growing town. In 1913, a fire burned for three days through the dusty, clabbered sprawl that had been Hadlock and left only two buildings standing in its wake. But even after the mill burned, some boat building and maintenance continued under the auspices of shipwright William Sears. That tradition continues today at the Northwest School of Wooden Boat Building. In 1981, Libby Palmer and Henry Yaton had the inspiration, the heartfelt vision to create an educational environment where people can learn these traditional skills. And they had the good sense to invite Bob Prothero to join in the effort. What Bob saw happening in the world all around him, it wasn't just in boats, it was just kind of in general is that the craftsmanship was going by the wayside. Uh, any kind of craftsmanship, and I didn't like it, and his little part of bringing some craftsmanship back into the world here was via boats. Bob thought that boats had so many crafts involved in them that it was a great medium to teach craftsmanship in general. And if the people were good, if the people were well taken care of, like he did his own employees, the boats would come. Our wooden boat building experience is an, a uniquely ancient human attribute. And I and the other instructors here at this entire institution are heirs to that. And we try to preserve it because we find that it just has a unique ability to make people grow and to learn and to just become different people. One of the things I miss most about my military life was the camaraderie, the group effort having a mission and everybody moving that mission along and then accomplishing it together. And that's absolutely what happens here at the boat school. Since I've been here, I have not had one instance of where my heart has been racing and I, I felt like I was out of place, like I shouldn't be here, I, I don't know what I'm doing. The people, the staff, I couldn't have asked for a better hand to help me get back into my community. Okay, Me and the other instructors, I, I feel, are here because oh. we all have a passion for boats. Oh. We're all obsessed with boats, and we're all naturally want to be teachers. What we try to do is we try to give the students the broadest range of experiences. Boat building isn't rocket science. It's a series of steps, and the steps are quite simple. The problem is, is that there's a million steps. The longer they're here, the longer they experience what they do, they realize that it's accumulation of a whole bunch of little tasks that look fantastically complicated when it's all put together, but it's really not. That's the whole point of the school, as far as I'm concerned, is, is, to, is to take the, the voodoo out of it, the real complication out of it. To start from, this is how you sharpen a chisel, to this is how you use a Japanese handsaw, to all of a sudden you're making your own tools, and then you're using those tools to then build a boat. It's a rapid program. In three months, we're building boats. So this is where you'd want to come to learn that in, in an accelerated fashion. You can't learn that on a job somewhere. There's no real apprenticeship jobs anymore. There's no old timer with a cool hat smoking a pipe in a shop somewhere that is gonna take you under his wing and teach you these things. The boat school is our apprenticeship program. The places that are touched on which are essential to our trade, which are lofting and fairness, something that you can only learn in a boat building school. 
Also, you just learn basic hand skills with power tools and hand tools, and you learn about the acquisition of skills, you learn about the completion of tasks, you learn about working in teams because you only can do part of it yourself. It's not so much the very particular skills, it's the package of education that they get coming out of there that I think makes them marketable. Most people down here have been to the boat school. It's a dense population of craftspeople that went to that school and built their foundation there. I had the same experience. Jeff is like a really accomplished shipwright. He's got so many tricks. So many tricks you can't learn even a fraction of them while you're there. I'm at work and I'll be problem solving some situation and then I'll be like, oh yeah, that's what Jeff was talking about. <laughs> and it's like years later, you know. They're definitely gonna learn how to problem solve ideas from your head and then make them with your hands, which is a different kind of problem solving. So taking ideas and turning them into three-dimensional objects. A lot of the other schools, they, they do great work, but they do kind of like the same projects every year. And it's kind of more of a cookie cutter program, which in a lot of ways might be good, but I like the variety. I like building different boats every time. This whole style of construction is new to me, but I'm not intimidated at all because I know that it's a series of simple steps. It's just a matter of figuring out how it all comes together and in what order. The teacher is hovered around the lines just as much as the students are and asking for input. And the beautiful part about teaching, especially when you have just enough students, you have a cross-pollinization of ideas now that's going to happen. And we actually had a boat designer named Bob Perry, a very well-known boat designer, come in and talk about this. And he said, there's something very special at this school. There's people that are offering ideas I never even thought of before. And I think that's part of the magic. Can you learn how to be a craftsman? Yeah. It's a lot of fun here, but it's definitely a steep learning curve, and it's uh, it's nice to be challenged. And you draw a straight line from that heel straight up to the shear. That gives your profile. I think of boat building as character growth. So my philosophy of teaching is to start off with great, supportive, warm, caring, teaching, showing them every detail over and over, and then sort of backing off on that as they get more and more skills and letting them discover more for themselves and make mistakes. You get out of the school what you put into it. Uh, be ready to exercise your brain because there's a lot of thought processes. Uh, I was really surprised. Uh, I thought, I didn't realize it was this hard. Uh, never built a boat or had any experience to it. When you're taking a piece of wood and bending it and twisting it and you're trying to get it to fit, be ready to exercise your brain because there's a lot of thought processes. It's not much, it's like a 16. The goal is to be a sponge and there's so much information to be absorbed and so many techniques to learn. And a lot of folks come from a background that has nothing to do with uh, shape or hull form or, you know, what, what exactly is a, a fair curve or a fair line. So the newness of the whole genre, I think is probably the, the big part of it. You do come through with a lot of skills, a lot more comfortable tools. The vocabulary was a huge stumbling block at first for me because I have no familiarity with carpentry, no familiarity with anything structural on boats. So just coming in as a complete novice, I still was able to get a solid foundation together. You know, you don't come to this school and in a year you're a master carpenter. They say, we're just giving you a foundation so you can go into the yard and you're trainable, basically, after you go through here. Basically, when you build a lap strake, you build it on a mold so it's flipped over and you build it upside down and you're working down like an umbrella and you look at it every day and you just keep going, keep going and you can feel yourself learning as you, you know, are shaping gains and putting everything into place. You can feel that growth happening. But when we flipped it over, I was like, oh my gosh, I was just like, behold, <laughs> this is awesome, <laughs> it's alive. I've decided that I'm going to go to Italy and um, research some masters to study with, with boat building, then come back to Port Townsend and hold classes and workshops where people can really tap into their creative energy 
and find themselves in boat building. They're in here with their peers, you know, and it is a lot of fun being here at this school. A lot of fun doing these things, bending the wood, cutting it, shaping it, learning how to use chisels, and pretty soon it all starts making sense and you come in and they'll just have their heads down and the boats are coming together. doesn't matter if it's a traditional carbell planked boat or a contemporary cold molded boat. You can almost feel the heart that goes into them. We'd end up building some really fine boats. A lot of them are just downright elegant. People that can grab tools, that can fix things, that can build things, that can look at the world and see, oh, I can fix that, I can create this. It's a world of possibilities that you engage when you have that kind of self-confidence. You might go into any other trade, but you still have that relevance. That's the eye that you bring and the thoughtfulness that you bring to everything you do as a boat builder. The boat school really is building on tradition. Those traditions of grassroots support, craftsmanship, are always going to live on here at the school. But so are the traditions of innovation and relevance and reaching a broad spectrum of today's community. But I want to make sure we value the work that's come before and honor it by making sure the organization is sustainable to carry these traditions forward for the next generation and the generations thereafter.